Welcome to IRL Media News. I'm your host, Chris Thompson, and today we're going green. We're taking a look at Tesla and their supercharger network and how it set the standard for electric vehicle recharging. We'll explore what led to opening up their network, what companies and non-Tesla vehicles they've decided to partner with, and what the potential risk could be of opening up their supercharger network to competitors. Let's get into it. Tesla is an American manufacturer of electric automobiles, solar panels, batteries for vehicles, home power charging, and mega packs for large-scale energy storage. In the last six months, Tesla has also begun manufacturing a humanoid robot called Optimus, which is known as the Tesla bots of the rest of us. Named after the Serbian-American inventor Nikolas Tesla, the company was founded in 2003 by American entrepreneurs Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpenay. You read that correctly, Elon Musk didn't actually found Tesla. He actually joined the company one year later in 2004 after investing $6.3 million into the company during a Series A round of investment funding. It was that investment that helped propel Tesla to become one of the most recognized car brands in the world and even spawned one of the world's most recognizable Twitter owners. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The EV surge started in 2008 when Tesla Motors released its first car, the completely electric Roadster. In company tests, it achieved 245 miles on a single charge, a range unprecedented for mass-produced electric vehicles in that day. On top of that, additional tests showed that it had driving performance that was comparable to many of the gasoline-powered sports cars of the world. The Tesla Roadster produced no tailpipe emissions and attained efficiency ratings that were equivalent to a gasoline mileage of 135 miles per gallon. The vehicle's electric motor is powered by a lithium-ion cells, which are often used in laptop batteries, and could be recharged from a standard electrical outlet. And that was just the first model. In turn, this led to the development of Tesla's Model S, X, and Y, which have only improved upon the Roadster's overall performance. To further sweeten the deal for Tesla drivers, in 2012, Tesla began building proprietary charging stations called superchargers across the United States and Europe, designed for recharging vehicles' batteries quickly and at no extra cost to Tesla owners. A single charge of just 15 minutes could add up to 200 miles of driving distance, helping drivers in more rural areas last longer on the road until finding another supercharger station. This also helped Tesla drivers to ease their range anxiety. Compared to the rest of the EV industry, Tesla's charging network is huge. According to data from the U.S. Department of Energy, Tesla's supercharger sites make up roughly 24% of all EV fast charging sites in the United States. Additionally, with more than 17,000 fast charger hookups, Tesla has more than 61% of all available fast chargers in the U.S. It seems like Tesla has dealt themselves a winning hand. So why open their supercharger network to competitors and out-of-network vehicles? Well, because the company needs to adopt the standard combined charging system, or CCS, to earn a slice of the 7.5% billion dollars in federal infrastructure spending for EV charging stations, which Tesla would otherwise see none of. On the other hand, opening the Tesla charging network to add CCS compatibility in conjunction with Tesla's proprietary technology could result in Tesla's charging network losing its reputation for reliability and fast charging. In a 2020 survey by Plug in America, they reported that the most common issues reported by EV owners was broken or non-working chargers. This report did note that the current Tesla supercharging network scored significantly better than the competition on every metric. So I guess you could say Tesla is looking to go green in more ways than one. But if Tesla wants to maintain its supercharger network reputation, it's got some work to do. The automaker recently agreed to open a large portion of its chargers to a growing number of car manufacturers starting next year including heavyweights like Ford and General Motors. The move promises to bolster Tesla's bottom line as it begins to monetize a costly capital investment, but it also risks upsetting existing and future Tesla owners who will soon have to contend with more competition for charging spots. Given Tesla's total fleet size in the United States, there's currently only about 80 cars competing for any given charging stall. That low number has meant that the wait time for Tesla owners are usually minimal to non-existent. In fact, Tesla's vehicle-to-charger ratio is more than twice as good as than any of its competitors combined. But the Ford and GM deals throw those numbers into doubt by opening up more than 12,000 supercharger stalls out of the roughly 19,000 plus that Tesla has installed to date. Both GM and Ford have a large number of EVs on the road today, about 120,000 and 90,000 respectively. And they plan to ramp up North American production significantly in the coming years. That's a lot of batteries that are going to need recharging. Before we continue, did you know that 99% of you watching this video right now aren't subscribers? Let's change that. Click the subscribe button down below to help support IRL Media News. Thanks. From a Tesla driver's perspective, this deal with GM and Ford sounds just about as attractive as buying Twitter for $44 billion and only making the network's usability more challenging. 
There's just not enough lipstick for that pig. However, there are plenty of investors who would agree that having more automakers and charging companies using Tesla's supercharger technology is a win. For one thing, analysts have pointed out that it could allow Tesla to argue that it should have access to federal funds to support charging infrastructure, since the North American Charging Standard, or NACS, is no longer just for charging its own vehicles. For instance, Rivian, GM, and Ford EV drivers will be able to utilize the Tesla supercharger network beginning in 2024, and by 2025, the Tesla charging port will be built into Toyota, Rivian, Ford, and GM EVs, meaning that drivers of those vehicles will no longer have to rely on purchasing a Tesla-made adapter for charging. This is sure to please a lot of consumers. And according to estimates by Piper Sander and Company, the partnership with these other EV manufacturers could yield up to $3 billion a year in additional revenue for Tesla. Talk about a company that just keeps printing cash and increasing their market cap. I wonder how long it'll be until other car manufacturers like Hyundai, Stellantis, Nissan, and Volkswagen adopt Tesla's supercharger standard. I guess it'll depend on how long those car companies' buyers have to wait in line to charge using outdated technology. That's it for this week's show. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get the latest updates from IRL Media News.